Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of news topics in the world of tech. The first is concerning the AMD Ryzen 3000 series, which is expected to launch in 2019 and how those processors could be hitting up to five gigahertz, according to reports. And after that, we're going to be taking a look at ASRock, who just might be entering the graphics card arena as an add-in board partner for AMD specifically going after the mining craze and trying to make cards for miners, which could alleviate prices here for gaming centric graphics cards for the rest of us, hopefully. But first we're gonna be taking a look at the AMD Ryzen 3000 series. This was originally brought to my attention this morning over on pcgameshardware.de. That's a German tech news website which covers PC gaming and hardware for PC gaming. And they had actually noted this from an interview that happened last month over on Anantech with Dr. Gary Patton. And this was basically, they were talking a lot about the seven nanometer process and the node shrink coming down from 14 nanometer on AMD Zen. Now this is a rather lengthy interview and if you wanna check out the whole thing, I'll be sure to link to it down in a one tab link in the pinned comment below. But the really the main area we wanna focus on here is the seven nanometer process. So for those of you not familiar, the Ryzen 2000 series is coming out in April. That's what AMD has reported. And that is coming down to 12 nanometers. So that's really a refresh of the last generation Zen from 2017, known as Zen Plus now for this second generation. But the big increase in performance is going to come when they go down to seven nanometer, basically cutting it in half from the first generation series of Ryzen processors. And when Dr. Gary Payton, the CTO, of Global Foundries, that's the chief technical officer of Global Foundries was interviewed, they asked him about what type of performance uplift we could see when going from 14 nanometer down to seven nanometer in the year 2019. The main question we're focusing on here is question 17, where they asked, does the first generation of seven nanometer target higher frequency clocks than 14 nanometer to which Dr. Gary Patton replied, definitely. It is a big performance boost. We quoted around 40%. I don't know how that exactly will translate into frequency, but I would guess that it should be able to get up in the five gigahertz range, I would expect. So that's coming from the chief technical officer of Global Foundries who could very likely be producing the third generation Ryzen CPUs and with them getting up to possibly five gigahertz, that would be absolutely amazing. I mean, the uh, original archi architecture on Ryzen was pretty damn fast and able to compete darn, pretty darn well with, with Intel, at least on a clock by clock basis, but Intel really kind of wins out in the clock speeds as those can readily hit up to five gigahertz now, but Intel is not really anywhere near hitting seven nanometer on their upcoming architectures. So this could be what really pushes AMD over the top and doesn't just make them a competitor with Intel. This could make them really beat Intel quite handily because I would love to see the Ryzen architecture at five gigahertz with all of those cores and threads when the processing power, that's gonna be mental. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Obviously, we've got Zen Plus coming next month, which I saw some rumors earlier today that it could be hitting around 4.3 gigahertz, possibly. So that's going to be good as well. But for people that haven't picked up Ryzen yet and maybe are going to pick up the one next month, this is definitely something to keep an eye on as 5 gigahertz is going to be a huge performance uplift over the previous generation. As Gary Patton said, roughly a 40% increase. So that's going to be quite nice to see. And I can't wait till 2019 so that we can test those things out. The next story we're going to be taking a look at is over on PC Games N, where actually they had got this report from DigiTimes, which was talking about ASRock. And according to DigiTimes, they had received information regarding ASRock trying to enter the graphics card market as an AMD add-in board partner. So if this were to become true, ASRock could possibly start producing mining-centric cards, specifically geared towards mining, which kind of makes a lot of sense as they saw a large number of sales last year after making mining specific motherboards. They put out the H110 Pro BTC Plus, which is an Intel based motherboard designed to hold up to 13 graphics cards using riser cards. So just a straight up Bitcoin and ether and whatever, just a mining board really specifically designed for that. You can find them over on Amazon. <clears throat> They're about $178 right now using Amazon Prime, so not that expensive. And they're a pretty bare-bones motherboard. I mean, looking at this design, it's only got 
two RAM slots and, you know, no other really gaming-centric features. It's kind of a bare-bones motherboard other than the fact that it can support 13 graphics cards, which is going to be pretty damn good if you happen to be a miner, but probably not necessary for gaming unless you can figure out some way to daisy-chain 13 Titan XPs in some crazy SLI solution. If, if you've done that, please please let me know and, and send pictures and let me borrow it because I want to I want to I want to benchmark that. But in all serious, this this could be great if they do produce these cards specifically for miners. Um, I mean, it's really not going to do anything to uh, kind of fix the supply right now, as there still are the memory shortages and the high prices of RAM. But if they're able to produce a significant number of graphics cards that are geared directly at miners that miners would want to use and see some benefit from, then I think that's just all good stuff as it could really alleviate things for the gamers. If the miners have cards that they want to buy that aren't gaming cards, it could just leave more cards out there for the rest of us gamers. So all in all, I think this is pretty good news. If you think this is going to come true, let me know down in the comments below and what you think about it. If they actually do start producing mining only cards, from ASRock, and I hopefully they maybe even do some gaming cards as well, but right now the rumors are just kind of pointing to them doing these mining cards, but I would certainly like to see what ASRock could do with a gaming card and doing kind of a gamer thing and just, you know, nice cooler and all of that. Could be interesting to see. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and comments down below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe. If you're not already, and if you've been here for a while, you can always hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of content here on the channel, and I'll catch you in the next video. Sarah.